Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Well, um, I don't know whether it's a virtue or blessing or a failure to be the very last speaker, uh, <laughs> but I hope, oh, it's a good feeling and I hope you are not too tired to listen to a boring talk. Uh, so, um, uh, I would start with a quote, actually a, a verse from Saadi Shirazi, a Persian poet of the 13th century. If thou art of elephant a strength or of lion glow, peace is in my opinion better than a strife. Uh, well, uh, I come from a country which is designated by this government as a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, well, I went through the most difficult journey to get to Amman's 2016. Uh, first, uh, because I needed a US visa to come here and uh, I had to travel to a third country to apply for that because uh, there isn't a US embassy in Tehran. Uh, there hasn't been one for nearly four decades. And uh, then wait 70 days for it to be issued, um, actually in the injury time. Uh, so, uh, but well, talking to you here, um, was the most, um, it was the strongest motivation for me and it made the hardships that I had to undertake easier. Well, uh, actually, um, my uh, work as a journalist involves cuddling always adventurous and unusual journeys and odysseys. So, uh, uh, this sense of being singled out as an Iranian citizen um, is kind of frustrating. I think it is, isn't it? Um, but I understand um, well we are being singled out. Well, um, as an Iranian citizen, uh, I think it is uh, like, it, 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 it looks like you, you have an infinity and people turn away from you so that they might not be tainted. And it, it feels like you are extraordinarily being singled out. But I understand why uh, my fellow citizens, my 80 million fellow citizens and I are being singled out. And this is because uh, over the course of the past 40 years, there has been a bulk of misunderstandings accumulated between Iran and the US, between our two countries. And there hasn't been the political will on either side to end the hostilities and eliminate the misconceptions and hostilities. Until recently when, uh, Iran's moderate president pushed for direct negotiations between the two countries um, to solve one of the most controversial issues between the two nations, the nuclear program, Iran's nuclear program. And um, well, after two years of intensive haggling, um, the controversy came to an end and the nuclear deal was struck. It's not being implemented fully because there are people in the Congress who don't like it. Um, but uh, well, in um, some 40 years, the taboo was broken and the two sides talked to each other. So uh, it, it, it talks to me, it speaks to me uh, of the chances of reconciliation, of the possibility that um, it's possible for the adversaries to come together and talk to each other even in the most difficult times. Uh, so I think uh, the same way US and Cuba restored diplomatic relations after more than half a century, um, and President Obama just recently made a trip to Havana in Cuba. Uh, I think it's possible for Iran and the US to pursue the same path. Uh, well, um, actually, uh, like I said, uh, part of my job uh, as, an, as a journalist involves um, advocating better Iranian US relations. And uh, I have been ready to pay the price for it. Um, because in a, in a religiously and ideologically conservative society as Iran, where talking about rapprochement between these two arch adversaries uh, raises many eyebrows and makes many people freak out about the possibility of uh, losing national sovereignty. Um, well, it's, it's costly to uh, continuously advocate for such a rapprochement. But uh, like it, uh, I lost my paid job at an Iranian publication after starting a freelance collaboration with the Huffington Post. So it was the first price, but I'm ready. And uh, to actually 
call for open relations between these two arc foes that were once arc allies. Of, of course, you know that some 40 years ago before the Iranian Revolution, um, the two countries were so close and there were uh, there was a very big U.S. embassy in Tehran that is no non-existent, but, uh, well, uh, uh, you have to understand the dynamics of such a subtle and delicate society as Iran to be able to co continue calling for such a rapprochement off the record, although it's not off the record. It's, uh, everybody's recording it, no problem. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, well uh, what I'm uh, trying to do and what I've been trying to do over the past five, six years has been to conduct exclusive interviews with dozens of prominent American politicians, diplomats, intellectuals, and Nobel Prize laureates, many of the faculty members at Stanford University, uh, whom I've invited uh, to the networking reception, but uh, they are not coming, uh, including Secretary Rice, who did not accept my invitation. Nah. But, uh, well, um, Part of my job in, involves uh, contacting them and talking to them and uh, raising this uh, uh, aspiration that many Iranian people, many young Iranians, and overall many p people in the population uh, love better improved relations between the two countries, collaboration between the two countries for the benefit of the two peoples, the two nations. Because it's my conviction, it's my understanding that hostility is not viable. Even if you prolong it for decades, it will eventually come to an end, like uh, it happened with Cuba. Uh, so if we cannot, uh, uh, or if uh, we are going to uh, uh, accelerate it, we should do our best. Because uh, like I said, um, it simply erodes resources, claims lives, even as it happened in the case of my country, and uh, it um, kills many hopes. Um, we, we, we have to try our best to accelerate the process, the rapprochement, the reconciliation. And it's not simply because I want to benefit my own people by calling for better Iran-US relations. It's because uh, I'm committed to peace. It's m one of my concerns. Because I do not like enmity between the nations. Because um, I have lost my uh, 80 year 18-year-old uncle during the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, and uh, because uh, when the former Iraqi dictator invaded Iran in 1980, uh, many untrained Iranian people, civilians, who are not soldiers, who were simply ordinary citizens, who were youths, who were students, went to the battleground to defend their country. And my uncle was one of them. And lo I lost him. And, uh, I know that uh, hostility, animosity, war, it brings destruction, it brings, um, it, it makes the distance between the nations longer. So um, we, 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 we had better work for peace rather than fueling uh, acrimony and bitterness. Uh, I'm not sure what is after this slide, but uh, because I do not want to show it up at the moment. Uh, yeah, okay, no, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, um, personally, to tell, you to, to, to tell you the truth, uh, several of my best and most inspiring friends are, Iranian, uh, are American citizens. And I, I'm convinced that um, Iranians and Americans can, can be very good and loyal friends. They can talk to each other constructively the same way I think and uh, I, I feel you agree that Iranian Americans are among the most productive and committed and um, patriotic members of the American society. At least you know Omid Kordasani in California here who is uh, with Twitter. And uh, the list uh, is not confined to these three pictures. There are some examples, some noted examples, but I think there are hundreds of uh, great, gifted, talented, and impressive Iranian Americans living here, contributing to the well-being of uh, the society, contributing to the progress of the society, the American society, of course. So uh, I think uh, this is one of the incentives and one of the reasons why Iran and the US need to come together and put aside the differences. Because if we continue citing grievances 
And if you continue complaining about the mistakes of the past, um, it can continue for years. But uh, we need to make brave decisions. And uh, well, um, I have received a very good feedback on what I've been doing. Uh, I'm glad that my interviews uh, have been read and shared by thousands of people last year. I was uh, honored to be part of the East Bus Center's Senior Journalist Seminar 2015, which was for me a good achievement, a personal achievement, and a response to my efforts, showing that uh, what I'm doing is being seen and is being received, uh, not, not only in Iran, but internationally. And uh, of course, uh, it was good for me because I was the youngest fellow of the program. Uh, Mm, and although I'm growing older, I'm now 26, and I was just, uh, well, I shared with you the story of nearly being killed on the way from my city to Tehran to fly to Ankara, then to Frankfurt and San Francisco. But um, it, it indicates to me that, okay, there is always something like that that awaits me, but uh, <laughs> there's, um, there's, uh, there's always a reason for me to think of the future, even a very dark future, of what happens for me tomorrow. Um, but I'm always ready to embrace the ordeals and hardships. And uh, so I continue fighting. Um, look, uh, I have a collection of uh, around uh, 500 interviews that I've done uh, since 2008-2009 with um, uh, politicians, diplomats, intellectuals, Nobel Prize laureates from different countries, mostly the United States, with all of whom I'm, I, I've shared the uh, uh, same concern, that we need to work to ensure that the future is bright. And I'm sure the future is bright. And uh, the future I envision is a future in which uh, I hope if my uh, two-year-old daughter uh, ever decides to travel to the United States, uh, she would not be viewed as a security threat or a second-rate citizen. And to ensure that uh, nobody will ever uh, burn the flag of the United States in the streets of Tehran. Thank you.